Hi, my name is Michelle Mauerman and I'm an Associate Professor of Neurology at Mayo Clinic. Our article, titled Monoclonal Gammopathy Associated Peripheral Neuropathy, Diagnosis and Management, will be published in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In this article, we review um, monoclonal gammopathies and their association with peripheral neuropathy. Uh, this article is a review article going over the literature and um, reviewing all of the pertinent studies associated with monoclonal proteins and the different types of peripheral neuropathies that can occur. Peripheral neuropathy is one of the most common neurological uh, diagnoses that primary care physicians will encounter in their practice. And the cause, there are many causes of peripheral neuropathy and trying to identify the etiology is often very daunting, leading to uh, extensive, expensive testing. Um, we wanted to touch on in our paper the association of peripheral neuropathy and monoclonal gammopathies. We specifically focus on monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and its association with peripheral neuropathy. We also review the literature regarding the published studies in terms of treatments that have been tried in this condition. Uh, some of the major take-home points of this paper um, is regarding monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and its association with neuropathy. We know that monoclonal gammopathies are quite common in the population and their incidence increases with age. This is also true of peripheral neuropathy. So it's important uh, in the evaluation of neuropathy to note that if a monoclonal protein is found, it is not always the cause of peripheral neuropathy and more often than not, it's a chance association and it does, does not imply causality. Some types of monoclonal gammopathies that are associated with peripheral neuropathy include multiple myeloma, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, Pohm syndrome, AL amyloidosis, and then Mugus associated neuropathy, Mugus standing for monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. In the cases of Waldenstrom's multiple myeloma, Pohm syndrome, and AL amyloid, there's often other systemic features uh, that go along with the syndrome in addition to the peripheral neuropathy. These other features are also helpful in aiding in the diagnosis. The presence of these systemic symptoms and certain types of monoclonal proteins can also help in um, identifying these conditions. In those cases where there's not an associated systemic disorder and you find a monoclonal protein in neuropathy, then further evaluation to decide whether or not the protein is causal in this case is important. Um, the typical neuropathy that's seen in Mugus associated peripheral neuropathy is um, associated with IgM monoclonal proteins. And so, uh, and the neuropathy that's associated with that phenotypically is sometimes referred to as DADS, distal acquired demyelinating symmetric neuropathy. This neuropathy often affects older men in the sixth to ninth decade and presents often with a sensory predominant link dependent neuropathy that really causes a sensory ataxia. There is often, there can be mild distal weakness, but it's often a sensory predominant disorder. This phenotype along with an, of uh, the neuropathy along with an IgM protein, um, uh, there's often a, a certain electrophysiological characteristic of this condition, which is um, that the distal latencies on the nerve conduction studies that are performed show prolongation and often markedly and out of proportion to slowing seen in other segments of the nerve. Sensory responses are often absent. This implies that the problem is affecting the very distal nerve segments, um, hence the name. And so um, <clears throat> seeing this particular neuropathy phenotype in IgM should raise suspicion that there is a causal association here. Unfortunately, for IgM-associated neuropathy, there is not um, a definitive treatment at this time. Uh, there have been many trials in terms of different treatments um, for this condition and none have shown a great response. The most promising had been rituximab, which has shown some improvement in some patients, and a randomized double-blind study, although it didn't meet its primary endpoint, did make a secondary endpoint in showing improvement in uh, neuropathy disability. 
Some individual case series have shown some patients respond to IVIG as well. Uh, we uh, typically recommend considering immune therapy in this particular type of neuropathy in patients who are either very young or have very severe neuropathy um, that's really affecting gait or significant weakness. Other patients can often be managed with symptomatic therapy and may have a very slowly progressive disorder and not require other immune therapy. Definitely further studies are needed um, into mugus neuropathy to try to help us understand the condition better and to try to identify treatments that would be more effective in this condition. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.